Hi, this is Justice. In this tutorial, we're going to be going through the preferences. So we're going to click on edit and then go to preferences. Keyboard shortcut is control comma. All right, the startup screen on the very first tab, general. Startup screen is when we open Revel for the first time. It gives you a new artwork dialog box. Uncheck this if you don't want to see that anymore. We'll open a little faster. Interface here, we can adjust this down from 50 to 200 percent. So if we bring this down to 50 and click OK, it will make all of the different windows much smaller or much larger depending on what you set there. If you check allow to dock panels on top and bottom, what that means is these will be dockable up here. Canvas zoom at cursor. If this is not selected, then when you zoom in on the canvas, it will zoom to the center of the canvas every time this will zoom at wherever the cursor position is. JPEG quality allows you to do lower quality to the left and higher quality to the right. PSD options disable PSD compression. Certain software programs don't open PSD files that have been compressed. So if you uncheck this, it increases the compatibility of PSDs created by Rebel. Edit box sensitivity. When you're adjusting a parameter like this one over here, we have size 40, loading 52. These box inputs can be increased more rapidly by bringing this to the right and slower by bringing it to the left. For memory, if you uncheck this, if you're running a couple different programs at the same time, your system will use up memory. If that memory gets low, like mine here says 1400 megabytes available, then that will pop up typically a warning saying that Rebel can't do too many undo steps. So the memory that's available for the program to save undo states has been diminished. And so it'll pop up a warning saying, hey, you can't undo as much. So this will turn off that warning. Language, you can select your language of preference and update languages automatically. Auto save, you can select the increment that Rebel saves your document. Show tool tips. If you're hovering over some of these different panels and different sections on the interface, a tool tip will show giving you more information about that particular item. You can uncheck that to hide those. Don't warn me after closing panels. So if I close all of these different panels, when I close the very last one, it'll show a warning saying you've closed all the panels are hidden. So if you want to keep that from showing, you can turn off that warning. Add clear layer button. That is right down here on the bottom of the layers panel. This is a very quick way for you to clear a layer. So you can add that with this toggle right here. Right here, it says after the creation of the new layer, edit the layer name. If we add a new layer over here, it'll immediately give you the option to enter a name for that layer. Just really nice, very fast. All right, we're gonna look at the tools tab. So here you can do show cursor. You can turn off the cursor entirely, or you can choose circle, circle with direction, circle with crosshair, crosshair, show crosshair while painting means that while you're using the pen on the screen, that it'll show the crosshair at the same time. Show paint and blend mode in cursor shape, brush resize color. Let me demonstrate these a little bit. So we're gonna do circle with directions. So you can see what this looks like. So here you can see the line in the center. That's the tilt of the stylus. If I select a different mode over here, you can see that it is a dashed line to indicate that it is paint and blend or blend. Let's increase the size of this brush with control. And you can see that that color was red while we resized. Now, if we switch to the eraser tool with keyboard shortcut five, you can see it is a dotted line as opposed to a dashed. If we choose paint or paint and mix, it's going to be a solid line all the way around in that cursor shape. All right, let's go back to preferences. So we can change the color. We can show paint and blend with either a full line, a dashed line, or a dotted line. Show crosshair while painting. Uh, show a circle with crosshair. Let's demonstrate this real quickly so you can see. That's just that little targeting system right underneath the tip of the pen. All right, let's go back over here. Select last paintbrush when color is picked from the palette. Uh, show wet layer when using wet and dry tools. 
always use pen tilt and rotation instead of follow trajectory in brush creator. <laughs> Let's look at those. So if I'm using blend, there is no color attached to the brush. If I select a color, it's going to switch over here to something that will use that color and allow me to paint. So if I'm in eraser mode and I select green over here, it will switch me back to something that will allow me to apply that color. So I'm not doing extra steps. Here in the brush creator, we have the options for pen tilt, rotation, follow trajectory, or none. When we have that setting set, always use pen and tilt rotation instead of follow trajectory. It means it's always going to override follow trajectory and use pen tilt or rotation if it's available on your stylus. If we're using a water tool, you tap on the water tool and you go to apply water on the screen. By default, it doesn't show the water that's going on the screen as it goes on. We're not showing the wet. If you turn on that setting, then when, if you turn on show wet or show dry, that means that when we're using the tools that need that information, it shows that information. If you're using a tool that doesn't need that information, it doesn't automatically show that information for you. So as soon as we switch to another tool, you'll notice that that wet information, that water color is going to disappear automatically for us. Show wet layer when using water or dry tools. Brush presets, inactive volumes, parameters, use previous values. So over here, you have your volume settings. You can select here and choose which of these volumes show or don't show. Now, if you have this set, what it's going to do is it's going to remember the hidden values that you have saved, as well as the ones that are showing. Show save changes as default warning. If this is turned on, if I go to override the setting, so I click on save changes as default, it's going to give me a warning here that says this is going to override these settings. This is a permanent change. Previous changes will be deleted. I think that's nice. If I'm using my accelerometer for tilting, so I can adjust where the water is going by tilting my computer, this will adjust how sensitive it is. The higher number I use here, if I bring this all the way up to 10, then it'll be very sensitive. That means a little bit of a tip is going to create a lot of tilt and to the left obviously will be lower. Adjusting opacity, water, and pressure with keyboard shortcut. There are keyboard shortcuts right here that allow you to adjust your opacity, water, and pressure. Setting this to the right will make it more sensitive. Setting it to the left will make it less sensitive. If you want to increase the amount of water that you have on your watercolor brush with the keyboard shortcut, setting this to the right to a 10 is going to adjust a lot more water, is going to add a lot more water with that keyboard shortcut, whereas to the left will be much less water. Transformation, if you're rotating an image, and you're using the shift key that will lock that at a specific angle. You can choose what that angle is here. So if you want it to lock at every 90 degrees, every 45, 30, 15, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1, it'll allow you to adjust whatever that shift modifier does when you're rotating. And let's show that real quickly. So we have a transform. Let's choose here. I'm going to grab the outside. I'm not pressing the modifier shift key. Now, if I press it, you notice that it locks at each of those increments. I'm going to hit escape and go back. Cursor position smoothing. You can adjust the smoothing of the cursor, that's pen or mouse, and adjust that setting here. To the right is going to be more smoothing, and it will introduce some lag in order to do that smoothing. So keep that in mind. To the left is less smoothing, and you can choose between moving average, which is a real-time smoothing process, and pulled string, which is going to give you more accurate results, but you're going to be pulling a physics-based string in order to do that. I'll watch the video on line smoothing for more information on that. Here in our next tab, color, tracing color sample size. Over here in the layers panel, there's a little T. If you tap on that T, it's going to turn that layer into a tracing layer. And so you can pick a color based off of the color that's underneath on the tracing layer. And this is going to help you pick whether it's a single pixel, three by three pixel or five by five pixel. Typically three by three or five by five is gonna give you a better average of that color as when colors are blended, 
uh, individual pixel might be a very different color than what you're seeing in that group. Mixed colors. This is this option right over here in the color panel. You have this little icon. And what that means is if I have green selected and I'm wanting to create a transition from green to a new color blue, if I have mixed color selected and I tap on a new color, it is going to incrementally go towards that color. So it'll adjust the color towards the new color I'm clicking. If I bring this to the right, there's going to be a whole bunch of steps. So if it says 100, think of it like 100 steps that you have to tap 100 times. It's not 100 times. But did you have to tap on it a whole bunch in order to get it to that spot? If you bring it to the left, it's going to be less steps, less transitions in order to get to that new color. Adjust color with keyboard shortcut. This is similar to like in tools. You can use a keyboard shortcut to adjust the color. And to the right, when this is set to the right to 10, this will transition faster. So different than mixed colors, to the right will be less steps, to the left will be more steps. Show wet. So when we are using either the water or the dry tools, it will show this blue color to indicate that that spot on the screen, on the canvas, on the paper is wet. And you can adjust that color right here. You can adjust stencil color and selection color. So if I choose a stencil, I can choose the opacity of that stencil and the color. The same thing with selection. Those settings, stencils and selection, those settings are right over here. In the layers panel on the bottom right corner, show hide selection. Let's make a selection and select and make a selection here. This is going to show everything that's not selected and you'll be able to see the parts that are selected very easily. Let's deselect that and let's open the stencils. We put a stencil on the screen. You can see that this is adjusting that color and the opacity of that stencil. In the color tab of preferences, we have a number of different options for color profiles. So you can choose from the installed color profiles on your system, or you can choose don't color manage by that top option. Here you can see which profile is currently selected. You can choose between perceptual, relative, calorimetric, saturation, or absolute calorimetric. I'm not sure that's exactly how you pronounce that. You can turn on black point compensation right here on and off. Policies, you can ask what to do, or you can keep the embedded profile if you want to convert uh, to preferred RGB color profile, you can choose that right here. If you're pasting or importing an image that doesn't have a profile already assigned to it, you can ask each time, or you can assume any one of these three options, sRGB, monitor profile, or assume workspace profile. Display, right here you can choose the profile assigned to your monitor. Rendering intent, you can choose again, perceptual, relative, uh, calorimetric, saturation, or absolute calorimetric. If you want to proof those colors to see if the colors that you are using are going to display properly on a specific profile or when printed, you can choose your soft proofing profile right here and choose what you want to test it against, rendering intent, again, those same options. Black point compensation, you can turn on and off right here, and you can choose what color is going to be displayed for your gamut warning. So here we have gamma correction turned on, and we're going to choose colors, you can see that this has changed those colors just slightly so that they fit within that profile. You turn that off, you can see a slight difference. Let's go gamut warning, and you're going to see these colors, the very, very red ones, are the ones that are being affected by that profile that will not display correctly. So that's a very easy way to see if the colors that you're using are compatible with the profile you're outputting to. In the tablet panel, we have use mouse position or use pen position, and the system sees these slightly differently, so you may want to play with these to see which one works best for you. Wacom device, this will typically need WinTab installed in order for your device to work. If you're using something like a Surface Pro or a Surface device, Microsoft Inc. won't need anything installed. And this one supports pen tilt on most systems, and Wacom device this one supports simultaneous pen and touch on some systems. Now on my Surface Pro, if I click on Microsoft Ink device, I need to have invert pen tilt turned on.
tilt rotation offset, you may notice that the stylus you're using is slightly off in how it aligns with the brush shape. You can adjust that offset right here. You can enable touch or disable it completely. You can choose which touch options are used. So single touch is used to pan the screen. I turn that off. Then when I touch the screen, it won't pan. Multi-touch allows me to scale, pinch in, pinch out, and zoom, and pan the screen with two finger touch. Uh, also, you can twist your hand with two fingers, and that will rotate the canvas unless you have that turned off. Touchpad sensitivity, this is referring to an actual touchpad on your keyboard. And here you can adjust how sensitive the mouse movement is inside of her bell using this slider. To the right is going to be more sensitive, which means faster, and to the left will be less sensitive, which means slower. Pen pressure smoothing. When you push soft and when you push hard, when you transition from soft to hard, this pen pressure smoothing will make that a clean transition, so it's not going to be jumpy. If you have that turned to the right, it'll be smoother. To the left will be more accurate. Pen pressure sensitivity. If you have this set to the right towards firm, you're going to have to press harder. If you have it set to soft, you won't have to press very hard on the screen at all. This last option here, keyboard. This is going to give you an option to change any of your keyboard shortcuts. In order to do that, you can tap right here in the field, this blue selected box, and input the keyboard shortcut on your keyboard. It will capture that information. You can remove the shortcut here or you can add a second shortcut to do the same function. Over here in the context menu, you can import shortcuts, you can export shortcuts, and you can reset all. Down here is a set default, which means if you've changed this and you want to go back to whatever was there originally, then you can hit set default and it will go back to the default setting. If you made a bunch of changes and you decide you don't want to keep them, you can just click cancel. All right, you guys, that's it for the preferences video. If you have questions, then put it in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.